Buckle up, man. The transfer portal is opening this week, and Miami's going to be aggressive. Here's why. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and also co-host of Locked On ACC. And thank you so much. Shout out to the everydayers for making Locked On Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We are free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, we'll talk today about players we certainly don't want Miami to lose in the transfer portal, about players and positions we would like Miami to add. I'll tell you why Miami's going to be aggressive in the transfer portal and a little bit later on, we're going to talk with pro football focus analyst Max Chadwick uh, about why he says Ruben Bain, if he were draft eligible right now, thankfully he's not, uh, but he would be a top five ed edge rusher in the upcoming NFL draft, which is pretty strong coming off a true freshman season. But first on with the transfer portal, um, if any of you have any doubts out there, you can expect Miami with the portal officially opening tomorrow, Tuesday, the 16th. It's going to be open until April 30th. Expect Miami to be aggressive. They're not going to be passengers. They're going to be drivers here. And that comes despite the fact that the Hurricanes are right now. This is going to change with outgoing players. Miami right now is over the scholarship limit. And yes, Miami does have a number of young, talented players and a handful of high-profile veterans, but the Hurricanes Folks, from everything I hear, Miami thinks they can use this upcoming transfer portal to put themselves in an even better position to contend this year. However you decide to define contending, whether it's trying to win the ACC for the first time, uh, also trying to get into an expanded 12-team college football playoff, or if it's contending for double-digit wins, Miami does feel an opportunity to get the sort of players that can allow them to contend this coming season. And there's a sense of urgency, folks, that naturally comes from having a quarterback in Cam Ward that Miami's coaches feel is going to be the best that's played at Miami in a very long time. And also knowing you've got this quarterback for just one season. So the urgency comes from wanting to maximize that one year with Cam Ward by surrounding him with the top available talent. There's also, along with that sense of urgency, there's also a sense of confidence that comes from the hype and the influence that surrounds Cam Ward. Because when you have an exciting quarterback like this in your building, who's you know not only exciting on the field, but you know he's he's very social off the field. He's very involved with recruiting and chatting with other players. And I think he's going to be instrumental in that in the coming weeks and try to attract other players to come to Miami. And Miami believes that Ward, he can attract top playmakers, especially offensive playmakers, to join him down here in Coral Gables. Miami also, in addition to that sense of urgency and that sense of confidence, Miami is also boosted by a great reputation among players around the country for their NIL capabilities. And obviously, they're, they're not the only ones with a strong NIL situation, but a lot of schools out there don't have it. So certain players may decide to test the waters in the portal to see if they can find not only a better football situation, but a better NIL situation somewhere else. And Miami is strongly positioned in that era. And before we talk about some of the specifics, ins and outs, position groups, possible players Miami could target, uh, again, if you had any doubts that Miami is going to be aggressive in this upcoming transfer portal, because I know some of you do, Josh Pate from 24-7 Sports, the late kick, said this about Miami in the portal coming up. Quote, no way around that. I would say a half dozen or more impact guys they will target, they being Miami. I think they feel good about several of them and, frankly, have for a few weeks I don't know who the big winner will be, but I would be very surprised if we aren't talking about the Miami Hurricanes as having fundamentally altered their starting 22, which is fun because, uh, you know, we just watched some, some, you know, some really good and, you know, some not so good, but overwhelmingly it was a positive spring game a couple of days ago. And, you know, some of those 
starters and some of those players in the spring game, uh, they may be different starters. A lot of them, you know, come August 31st when Miami opens up against the Florida Gators. Now, when we talk about Miami being aggressive in the portal, I know at, at times over the last couple of years, um, Miami has just, they've needed not only good players, but they've also needed backup players. They've needed warm bodies. Uh, you know, just you know, lacking so much depth. Uh, Miami's depth, Mario Cristobal has raised the floor of that with the way he's recruited and with the way he's worked previous transfer portals. So in this case, and they don't even have the roster spots for this if they wanted to, but in this case, Miami in this portal is not going to be going out there grabbing like, hey, this guy might be a third stringer. This guy might be a second stringer. They're not going out there for Jags. Miami's going to be looking strictly for difference makers. This time around, it's quality, not quantity that matters. Uh, and we'll start here. Uh, I don't necessarily think this is the number one priority, but it might be a co-number one priority. Getting a workhorse top line running back is looking like a priority right now for Miami. A name we've already talked about who's going to be officially in the portal tomorrow is Damian Martinez from Oregon State. This is someone who excels in yards after contact, which is going to make him very attractive to Mario Cristobal. He excels with his durability, and he ran for almost 1,200 yards last season. This is a true featured back. He's going to be available, scored nine touchdowns, averaged 6.1 yards per carry last year. So Damian Martinez is the type of player coming out of Oregon State that I can absolutely see Miami going after. Now, why? Why will they be going after running backs? We don't know the injury timeline right now on Fletcher. I think that's a little bit unclear. At least it's unclear to me. Um, Trevante Citizen is still a ways away. We'll talk more about him a little bit later on. Uh, so if you're looking for these big-bodied, featured-back type of guys, you want someone like that to start the season with and to make a difference, this is why Miami, I think, is going to be aggressive for a guy like Damian Martinez. Now, again, uh, this is going to be a crazy week seeing who decides to jump into the portal and who doesn't because there are going to be some players who are rumored to test those waters who may decide not to. Uh, but a name that's been floating around this morning, at the time I say this, he has not entered the portal. I can't say for sure if he will, but there is some chatter about North Carolina's elite running back, Amari and Hampton, possibly testing the waters. It's a rumor right now. But if, if Hampton were to become available, you might not be able to do any better than this. <laughs> this is a guy who rushed for 1,500 plus yards last year, 15 rushing touchdowns and a receiving touchdown. He can take over games. Miami has seen this guy take over games before, and Hampton averaged 5.9 yards per carry last year. So again, I, I don't know for sure. Martinez definitely going in the portal. The other one, I'm not 100% sure at this time, but it's definitely something to watch out for. And that's the type of profile, folks, of players that I think Miami would be going after at the running back position. Um, I don't have as much in terms of specific names at wide receiver, but I think receiver, despite there being a lot of positives in the room right now, I think that's a position that could become a target depending who hits the portal. If, if you can find a difference maker there, like a guy who you can immediately plug in, not only to start, but to be a game changer. I think it would take that type of player for Miami to take a look at receivers. Because again, I feel pretty good about my, what Miami has in that room. So I wouldn't go after a receiver unless someone truly elite becomes available. Like you remember uh, what a difference maker Tez Walker was at North Carolina last year, how he could just come in and take over games, literally did it to Miami last year. If you can find someone like that, you pull the trigger, right? Otherwise, you feel pretty good about what you have. Xavier Restrepo had a thousand yard season last year. Jacoby George had some excellent moments, uh, but you you don't have someone who's like a, a proven consistent game changer. I wouldn't rule out someone who's currently on the roster emerging and becoming that but you don't have that necessarily proven in the room right now. If you could find that, you go after it. Uh, and I think it's going to be a little bit easier than it was because I, I know the last the last couple of uh, of years when you know when Miami is trying to attract top receivers to come in through the portal, it's it's been difficult at times. Specifically, a year ago, heading into the 2023, so you remember how bad Miami's offense and passing game was in 2022, right? And you know. They couldn't draw flies into that receipt when it came to the transfer portal. They had a really, really tough time there. 
Uh, they're not going to have that problem this year because even before Cam Ward arrived, Miami put up way better pa- – despite quarterback inconsistencies, Miami put up way better passing numbers last year, and you had some standout receivers on the roster. Now you've got Ward. So this year should be much easier to attract top wide receiver talent. We'll talk about defensive needs and possibilities on the other side. I'm also – I'm going to be answering some questions from Locked on Kane's insiders on this one who are – they're really trying to pick my brain on on who I think might leave in the transfer portal because obviously when you're talking about trying to clear a half dozen spots and you're about a half dozen spots over the roster limit right now, you're talking about close to a dozen exits. So we will talk about all of that. And again, we're going to talk about the future NFL draft stock from Ruben Bain Jr., Cam Ward, Xavier Restrepo, Kiko Maui Noah with Pro Football Focus analyst Max Chadwick a little bit later on. So, folks, it's a busy episode. We're only getting started on this brand new Locked on Canes. And if you're a small business owner, you're only getting started with LinkedIn jobs. Folks, when you're hiring for that small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Guys, I know this works because I've found jobs through LinkedIn Jobs before. It isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making this Monday episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Locked on's NFL Mock Draft live on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern time, streaming on the Locked on Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern time to hear who the local experts on Locked On are picking for every NFL franchise with five react- with live reactions, not five, live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7 Eastern time, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7 streaming channel or on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, so folks, we talked a little bit about uh, positions like uh, like wide receiver, running back, especially that I think Miami's going to target. Uh, Miami's Miami's good at tight ends; they're not going to target anybody there. You know, I I believe Miami's good at offensive line, unless you know just someone who's way high on Mario's Christmas list were to become available. I, I don't expect Miami to be aggressive on the offensive line. I think that they're rightfully so pretty happy with what they have right now uh quarterback they're obviously they're good with what they have right now I think Cam Ward's going to be one of the better quarterbacks in the country so you you take a look uh, at the defense uh we already know Miami's losing a potentially good one uh they're losing defensive end Nigel Lee Kelly who's going to enter the portal now I'm not sure how much he would have played this coming season anyway because I don't know when he's going to be healthy but I do know Miami might use his open scholarship and roster spot on adding a more experienced alternative. USC transfer Romello Height, who had four sacks and I think 21 tackles last year, he recently visited the U. Cam Ward uh, was the host on on Romello's visit, so that might be someone who I think can be a, a pretty solid, experienced, rotational guy you could add there. I, you know, I, I don't care that he burned Manny Diaz. If you water under the bridge for me, uh, if this is someone you think can make your roster deeper and better, uh, you go after him there. Um, now, defensive tackle is another position that's been thought about as a potential spot where Miami makes a move. And here, I think you only make a move if you find someone who's definitely a starter like that because Miami's already brought in a a couple of really good ones who can definitely compete to be a starter uh, on this defensive line 
Miami's already had C.J. Clark from NC State, Marley Cook from Middle Tennessee, uh, but there is talk that adding another defensive tackle is a distinct possibility, but I think it's only if you get someone who's like truly special. Um, so that's not as much of like a major need, but it's a need. I think cornerback, I think that's a major need. So Miami has some talent there, and they've already got one starting spot on lockdown with Daryl Porter, but I do worry about the overall depth there. Um, now, the guy who's... For my money, the best in the portal right now, uh, more are going to enter. But this guy's been in the portal since December is Takario Davis from Arizona. That's a stud. He's in the portal. Now, I've, I've heard he might want to stay out west. I've heard Washington is a possibility for him, or he might even stay in Arizona. From what I hear, he might decide not to leave. But so far, he's probably the best available until we see who else jumps in. Uh, I think safety is another position of need. Um, you know, obviously I feel very comfortable in Mish Powell, the Washington transfer, uh, locking part of that down. And, you know, you've definitely got some, some younger guys who are, are making a case of stepping up. Jaden Harris has been pretty consistent throughout spring, Savion Riley, uh, at times and Zaquan Patterson eventually is, you know, I think going to be one of those great safeties at Miami, but this may be a position where you might want to get someone else who's a definite starter. Uh, I've heard about that one as well. So, uh, this is going to be. It's going to be crazy, folks. It's going to be fun to see who comes in. It could be stressful at times, though, seeing who might go the other way. Uh, we get a question from one of our Locked on Canes insiders. And by the way, if you want to become a Locked on Canes insider, we're always taking new members. Click the link in the show description below. Uh, when you become a Locked on Canes insider, click that link. You get text messages directly from my phone to yours and vice versa with transfer portal scoops breaking news, practice updates once fall camp begins, all sorts of news and rumors about Miami football. Uh, so become a Locked on Canes insider. Try it free for 14 days. And then if you like it, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. We give you a lot of added value on there on the Locked on Canes insiders chat. Uh, we get a question from Pat Mack who says, hey, Mario got quite a few players in the spring game. How many players didn't get in could indicate who's entering the portal I'm sure that at least a couple of guys that did play will also enter. Could you talk a little bit about who didn't get in the game? Um, he says, thanks. And by the way, I'm very jealous. I couldn't go to the spring game. Um, so uh, yeah, honestly, I, I don't know if that was a great indicator because there were, there were a lot of players who like didn't play or were limited because of injuries. And we know injuries don't get talked about very much. Miami keeps that very close to the vest. And so it's like, you know, someone might say, oh, well, maybe, maybe Jacoby George is going to leave. He won't because he didn't play much. He didn't play much because he was injured. Uh, you know, Reuben Bain, I think, was used a little bit sparingly because he was banged up. He did play, though. Uh, so I think I think injuries probably had more to do with that than, you know, where so like Trevante Citizen, another one, and, and he might, he might. We'll talk about him in a second. I, I don't know what his future holds, if it's at Miami or someone else. But, you know, I know he's obviously recovering from a serious injury, and he had his right hand in a, in a club. So he's he's dealing with some stuff. So I don't, I don't know if in this case, playing time was the best indicator. We get a question from Andrew from Pennsylvania who says, hey, aside from Jakari Brown, what player is the most notable or highest potential player that we will most likely lose coming up in the transfer portal? Uh, now, Andrew, um, I honestly, I can't say who we will most likely lose because I don't play the speculation game, at least when I can avoid it, right? Because... Um, there's a lot of players who are probably deciding things, and I don't know. Now, if I'm going to give you my personal opinions, I think there are there are a few players that definitely I was a little bit concerned about heading into the spring game. You know, guys who maybe didn't get much playing time last year, so do they want to stick around? Or guys who are coming off serious injuries, are they going to stick around? And yes, quarterback Jakari Brown has been a big topic of conversation in recent weeks. And, you know, to add some fuel to the fire. Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald wrote an ex post yesterday saying that, you know, he had heard Jakari was considered leaving, but we don't know what's going to happen. You're considering leaving. We don't know there yet though. Now Jakari, this is a player I do not want to lose because he's been improving each year and he has potential to be a high level starter someday. Obviously everyone's behind Cam Ward this year, but Jakari has improved himself a little bit or a lot every single season. And if it does come down to a competition next year, for that starting job, I would love him to still be here and be in the thick of that, along with Emery Williams. You know, again, I, I didn't think uh, Reese Poffenbarger didn't have a very good spring game. That was not a very good showing for him. He's he's been better at other parts of the spring, 
but listen, Jakari, um, this is one we're definitely going to be watching out for the next couple of days. Keep my fingers crossed. I hope he stays. But folks, whatever these guys decide to do, I wish them the best because I want what's best for these players. And at, at a certain point, sometimes, you know, it's about it's about yourself and your family. Uh, we all love the team. We live and die in Miami, but sometimes these guys have to find the best opportunities. I don't know what's going to happen with him. Now, you know, someone that I, I thought made a really good case for himself in the spring game, and I think he's going to stay, uh, is Shamar Kirk. You know, barely played last year, but in him not playing last year, he was able to redshirt last season coming out of JUCO. So Shamar Kirk has two full years of eligibility left, and he played great in the spring game. He played excellent. He had two of the biggest plays in the spring game. So, you know, just with Miami having a lot of young, talented receivers, I didn't want Kirk to be like a forgotten man, but he's had a really good spring. I feel much better about him staying at this point, and I hope he does. You know, I've definitely, like, I've, I've had at times concerns about Trevante Citizen. We'll see what happens there because he's still not all the way back. He's missed the last year and a half with serious injuries. I don't know what the future holds for him. I hope it's in Miami because if he can get back to his pre-injury levels, this can be a featured back someday. You know, I, I hope Miami keeps all of their young tight ends. Uh, you know, Jackson Carver, I was happy to see him have a big catch in the spring game because he, he's someone who came in just kind of raw out of high school, didn't have much experience playing football. He can develop into a special receiving tight end. Uh, a guy that I would definitely wonder about is Zion Nelson. I just I don't know what the what the future holds for him. He's coming off of serious injuries. Uh, this is not someone that I expect to be a factor among Miami's offensive line starters and rotations this year. So that's one I'm definitely going to be watching uh, in the coming days. Uh, we get a question from who I did. This person didn't sign the question. They said, uh, do you know if Miami escaped any spring game injuries, uh, any significant injuries? Um, I have I certainly I didn't see any significant injuries on the field. Haven't heard about any. No news is good news in this case. Folks, we're going to talk with pro football focused analyst Max Chadwick. Why does Max, is he trying to uh, entice Reuben Bain to the NFL? Reuben Bain cannot leave for the NFL until the end of the 2025 season. Thank goodness. But uh, according to Max Chadwick of pro football focus, if assuming eligibility for all of these guys, he would have Reuben Bain as the fifth best defensive end prospect in the NFL draft right now. Why? And what does the NFL future hold for players like Cam Ward, Kiko Maui Noah, Xavier Restrepo? You want to keep it locked right here on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And yeah, you want to keep it locked to FanDuel as well. Guys, we're having so much fun on this sports book, America's number one sports book. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Got your Miami Heat plays ready. Your Florida Panthers have been red hot. Right now, new customers at FanDuel get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel. America's number one sports book. Ruben Bain last season, co-leader on Miami with sacks at seven and a half. Bain was second on the team in tackles for loss last year. Thankfully, uh, Bain will not be draft eligible until after the 2025 season. But Max Chadwick from Pro Football Focus is already imagining uh, maybe what things could look like with Reuben Bain if he were draft eligible this year. You see this graphic, top 10 if all were eligible draft prospects on the edge with James Pierce of Tennessee at number one, uh, Layatu Latu at two, Nico Sorton from Texas A&M, three, Jared Verse of Florida State. That's someone the Dolphins might look at at fourth. And then Reuben Bain right after that at number five. And we have the man who compiled this list joining us now, Max Chadwick from Pro Football Focus. Max, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on again. Of course, it's a pleasure. And so, okay, and again, thankfully, Miami fans don't have to worry about Reuben Bain in the draft anytime soon. It's going to be a couple more years. But after a standout true freshman season at Miami, what stands out to you most about Bain? Uh, he was unbelievable. I, I, you know, there was um, some talks before the season about him being kind of a breakout player. I know he's a really highly rated recruit, too, so I kind of had my eye on him uh, originally. And then he just... He proved why that that hype was uh, was there before the season, and 
you know, looking back, he had an 89.3 pass rushing grade last year. And among Power 5 true freshmen, since we started doing this in 2014, the only one who's had a better pass rushing grade in their first year of college football was Miles Garrett. And we all know how amazing Miles Garrett is now, arguably the best edge defender in the league. Uh, he just won Defensive Player of the Year in the NFL. And the guys right behind Ruben Bain in terms of true freshman Power 5 uh, pass rushing grades are Howard Perkins, the LSU now off-ball linebacker, who obviously is an incredible pass rusher and will probably be a first-round pick in 2025. And then right behind that is Nick Bosa, who also, like Miles Garrett, has an argument to be one of the best edges in the league. And then right behind him is Dexter Lawrence, who is one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL right now for the New York Giants. So uh, that's a really, really good list to be on right there. So if that's any indication of what kind of player Ruben Bain is going to be, not only in college but in the future – uh, he is going to be an absolute superstar in the NFL and in college football. Now, of course, you know, it's just one year of production. We want to see how he develops more in year two and year three. Uh, but as of right now, man, he, he looks like one of the best edges in college football. And that's why he ranks so highly in my ranking of every edge if everyone was eligible, because I think there's a really good chance he could be a top five pick potentially in 2026. Which I know, again, like it's two years away from now, so it could look a lot different from now until then. But uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to project right now is how these guys are going to look when they finally are draft eligible. And Ruben Bain looks like a potential, you know, top pick in the NFL draft when he finally does declare for it. Uh, it's really cool, and uh, and hopefully he can stay on that trajectory. I did also want to talk to you about some players who uh, will be uh, likely entering the NFL draft next year from Miami. Uh, you know, we know Cam Ward is going to be a one and done at the U. This is his final year of college eligibility. He'll be on to the NFL. Ward actually dipped his toe in the water and initially declared for the NFL draft, decided to come back one more year in college. Do you think he made the right decision coming back for a year and how do you project ward as a possible nfl prospect a year from now yeah he definitely made the right call i i think his tape is still very uh, a lot of roller coaster in there honestly like he can make throws that nobody else in college football can make and he also uh makes a lot of head scratching uh plays i think he actually over the last two years i think his turnover worthy play rate actually i think is the highest of any quarterback and i think the power five maybe even all college football i gotta look that up again but uh yeah he's still a roller coaster so if he declared for the draft um when he originally did i, I didn't love that move because i was like ah he's gonna be a day three pick maybe like someone's gonna be like all right we'll take a flyer on him but we're not gonna like uh treat him like you know a second or third round pick and also, this year's quarterback class is so good that like he really wasn't going to be able to compete with the top guys in the draft. Next year, there's a chance. You know, if he does uh, improve and he you know takes out a lot of the uh, wild parts of his game and plays a little more under control and, and while still making those wild plays for Miami, then yeah, he could join the uh, the top group of the quarterbacks in this in next year's draft because I think it is a a notably weaker quarterback class than it is this year. I, th I still think there's some good guys at the, uh, at the top with Carson Beck from Georgia and Shador Sanders from Colorado and Quinny Ewers from Texas. But uh, there is a path there for Cam Ward, whereas there really wasn't a path for him to join Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, like those guys on top of this year's draft after what he showed at Washington State this past year. So uh, I still got to see a lot of improvement from him. I'm not uh, all the way in on Cam Ward yet, but he does have a very high ceiling and one of the higher ceilings, I think, in college football. Now, over on defense, uh, a player who was uh, probably the only guy on that defense who made a bigger impact than Reuben Bain last year was linebacker Francisco Kiko Mauinoa, who, who did, uh, I, I'm not exactly sure when he would have been drafted if he had decided to come out, but it was a decision for him. He decided to stay and play a final year at Miami coming up in 2024. Um, you know, Kiko, uh, again, I thought was pro arguably the MVP of the team last year, in my opinion. How do you look at him as a draft prospect for next year? Yeah, I like him. You know, Kiko, obviously, he's, he's got a good bloodline. He's another guy who uh, didn't make my uh, my tackle list for all eligible, but is definitely a guy I'm keeping an eye on. Is uh, I think it's actually I wrote him up as the 2026 guy to know is his little brother, uh, Francis uh, yeah. Noah, who was a, a five-star recruit coming out of high school, played, I think, right tackle for, for Miami this past season. And, and actually, it was pretty impressive there. But going to Kiko, I, I really like him. I think he's a really good run defender, bigger linebacker, 6'3", 230. He's got good size there. Um, I do want to see him get better in coverage, which is why I think he ultimately decided to come back, is that he just wasn't really showing too much of that. Whereas at Washington State, he actually was a really good uh, player in coverage. Miami took a step back this past year. But really good run defender, really solid run defender. Uh, I like a lot of the things that he does for Miami's defense. And yeah, I, I think he made the right call as, and he was a guy that I was really excited about when he uh, decided to come out uh, to, to transfer to Miami because I really liked his tape at Washington state. Uh, and now he's, you know, still a really good run defender, but like I said, he's got improving coverage. I do like what he shows in, in slot coverage though, when he is, you know, man up on the slot. 
Uh, I think he showed some good stuff there, but overall in the box, I just I don't think it's been as good as it was at least at Washington State. Uh, but like I said, great run defender, good size for the position. I think he could be one of the better linebackers in next year's draft, but I definitely think he made the right call uh, staying in school this year. Even though this year's a weaker linebacker class, I think he still made the right call staying for another year in Miami and uh, giving another go. Yeah, and you know, a, a player uh, who is the thousand yard receiver from last year, who is returning to Miami for his final season, Xavier Restrepo. Uh, he he's an interesting one to talk about as an NFL draft prospect for next year because he obviously he doesn't have the prototypical size that people would think about for a wide receiver. Does most of his work uh, in the slot, but um, he's had the numbers, he's had the consistency when he's on the field. But how does that project to the next level, Max? Yeah, I think he might be the best. I mean, it depends on what you call Luther Burton the third because he also plays a lot in the slot too. But I mean, you can make an argument that Restrepo is the best slot receiver in college football right now. I actually had him number five in my receiver rankings for next year uh, out of all the receivers in college football returning. Uh, Luther Burden, the third from Missouri, was number one. Tetsuro McMillan from Arizona was two. Emeka Ekbuka from Ohio State was three. Uh, Tez Johnson from Oregon was four. And then I had uh, Xavier Trepo at five. Um, he actually had uh, 1,074 receiving yards from the slot this year, which actually was the second most among uh, all FBS receivers behind Malik Washington from uh, – from Virginia, uh, also at 87.5 PFF grade, uh, which was seventh among all power five receivers. He's a really, really reliable player, um, really just a, a security blanket, which is a guy that I think will be really valuable to Cameron Ward next year. Like, well, like I said, can have some high highs and low lows. You can have a really safe option in Xavier Shepard to throw to. That's, that's going to be a valuable pe player for Cam Ward as he tries to take out a lot of those lows that you saw at Washington State. So, um, he actually had the third most catches that went for a first down or touchdown last year among power five receivers. So I, I think he's going to be Cam Ward's best friend next year. Uh, I think those two are going to get along really, really well. And yeah, I love Xavier Estrepo. Again, as an NFL prospect, it's going to be interesting because like you said, he's, he's more of a slot receiver. And usually those guys, you don't really see them go in the first round at least. But there is a, a pass for, path for him to become a, uh, a starter in the NFL. So I can see Xavier Estrepo for sure if he has another great year, potentially being a, a second round pick in the uh, NFL draft or third round pick. I like that a lot. It's definitely reasons for Miami fans to be excited about these players heading into the 2024 season. Awesome job here, as always, by Max Chadwick. You want to follow him on X at Max Chadwick CFB. And Max, I remember the last time we spoke to you, you had that confusing Chad Maxwick handle, which made a lot of people think your name was Chad. Uh, <laughs> I, was that the reason why you switched it up? I switched it. Yeah, that was one of the reasons I had a few radio hits I did where they called me Chad because uh, they thought my name was Chad. <laughs> Um, and then also my, my bosses finally came to me like, listen, you got to change it. Like you, you gotta, like, I know you love it. I still have my Instagram handle is Chad Max, but that was my nickname in go. high school. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I had to change the Twitter handle. I was like, I, I, I should probably go by my actual name. So people actually know who I am. So. Good stuff. Make sure you check him out there on X. And also, he's the host of PFF's college football sh show. So check him out there and check out his work at Pro Football Focus. Max or Chad, whatever you prefer to be called, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time. And we'll talk to you again. Thanks, Alex. That was awesome stuff there by Max Chadwick from Pro Football Focus. Thanks to you guys for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. If you're watching us on YouTube, smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Subscribe on any audio platform, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Folks, make sure you're also checking out Locked on ACC. I'm now a permanent co-host with Kenton Gibbs of Locked on Wolfpack, who is awesome. We do that show every single day as well. We'll talk to you guys again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.